Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So, we've got one system today to check out from the user Rusty1980 in Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending this system in. And without further ado, let's get right into this. So, I already got their system installed and the thumbnail looked pretty cool. So there it is there. So you can see there's like a little, pro so the image is quite small, but you can see there's a little pro planet star. Looks quite a cool, uh, cool shot actually, so we're going to go ahead and see what that's all about right okay here it is nicely sized system alrighty so the Solaris system is a Chinese system about seven light years away from Sol so the Sun it's compro uh, comprised of Solaris a whitish blue main sequence star light beacon a pulsar with a single planet around it which orbits in a debris field or debris field and Callan a Sun like star on the outskirts of the system in total there are roughly 20 planets uh, humanity has colonized almost all the objects except for the planet around Light Beacon. Oh yeah, around the Pulsar could be trouble. The system is sharing the same universe as the Avatar movies. Nice. Okay. Right, so where are we? So... Solaris. So B is Solaris. So, hang on, so where are we? So... Not sure what the B there means, as it's around like all of them, but let's uh, see. So, so Solaris itself, yellow white main sequence star in the latest stages of its life. It's 49% more massive and 2.5 times the width of the sun. It clocks in at 7.12 billion years old. Nice. Okay, next up we got Flame Moves over here. Pretty hot in temperature. Okay. Hot Jupiter orbiting above the edge of the Stellarid Corona. Its clouds tainted red and yellow due to the presence of liquid gemstones in the atmosphere. As Stellaris ages and expands, if not moved, Flammus along with its moon will become the first swallowed by the expanded star. Oh dearly me. And that one's looking pretty uh, burnt up as well. Oh yeah. So two very, very hot worlds already. If we look at the zone, you can see there. Yeah, we're in the, in the black zone almost. Okay. Oh. Except so we've got Una. A hot Saturn-class gas giant taking about the same time as Venus to orbit around its star. Not much information has been gathered on Una because of the apparent lack of interest by the public to explore this world. Una's rings are almost entirely rock and its rings are being stolen by the star, losing one to five particles of the rings every year. Okay. So it's got the double set. That's looking pretty cool. I like the colour scheme on that of the yellows and the blues. That's quite a nice mix there. Moving on, we've got Elton. Uh, there we go. And is that the one next one we need to go to? Oh, no, we're going to Aster next. Okay, so we're skipping that one for the time being. Okay. So we're going to Aster. Oh, this is the one with the thumbnail. Let's go and try and get the sort of the thumbnail. It was something like this, wasn't it? Actually, we can't really make that image. I think the probes moved position since the screenshot was taken, but it was something like that. Yeah, it's a cool, cool shot nonetheless. So, a little probe around it. Looks to be one of the more hatable wells in here as well. Okay. The purple jewel of the Solaris Chinery. First discovered in 2134 by ground based telescopes on Iris. Very cool. Aster is one of the only natural hatable wells in the system. The atmosphere of this world is toxic for humans needing uh, exopacks. Bulky rebreathers commissioned by the RDA to breathe. Atmosphere composition is one to one with the extra solar moon Pandora. Okay. So there's your avatar, avatar world. Pretty cool. Um, which is which is in Alpha Centauri. Okay. Asa's part life is red due to the slightly whiter shade of light coming from Stellaris, paired with the light coming from Light Beam and Callan. A Asterion is almost never dark. Aster is home to a civilization that is on the level of technology of the Bronze Age of humans. Relations with natives are worsening faster. Oh. As you can see, it's getting a bit of a very, very faint light on the back by the looks of things, but not much. Okay. So we've also got the moons. So we've got Topi B over here. It's a very green looking one, as we can see. Right, where are I? A small capture moon of Aster covering a thick smog of chlorine and other toxic gases. It's a world soldiers in trenches would fear even thinking of. Its orbit puts it in direct conflict with Aster's other, much larger moon. The two will collide in two billion years, destroying Topi and devastating Lunaria. 
Aster will gain a ring system much like Saturn after the event. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, they are very close. They'll eventually get pulled together for sure. That's a big moon as well. So Lunaria. So yeah, the largest moon covered in atmosphere of water vapor, helium and oxygen will tie to the mass of that of the moon. Surprising moon. Its deep purple oceans are filled with primitive that evolve and grow bacteria similar to ones in Earth's oceans. Nice. It's a nicely designed world as well. I like that. Cool, cool. Then we've got Akam and Salvi over here. There's no mention of those in the description. And they appear to just be asteroids. So, there they are. Okay. Very nice. So we've got this one, pole stuck over here. A warmer Mars. It has lakes of water on the surface. Its land is covered in a fine red dust, finer than smoke. Understandably, humans went to terraform post that car. Materials are not available in the system for this to begin. Alrighty. Okay. Got a little eclipse there as well. Also, guys, I do apologise if you hear me sort of uh, snuffling around. I've got a bit of a... I think my nose has got a bit of a cold by the sounds of things. So, yeah, I do apologise if you can hear any. <laughs> I'm trying my hardest not to, but... It is quite difficult. Right, okay. So there are those guys. And then a uh, little moon over here as well. Cool. Alright, so next up we've got Elton. Oh, so is that the one that was closer to the... Yeah, it is. Okay, so we're going back inwards. That's the one we missed. So I like the theme in on this guy. Got the moon as well. Discovered by John Elton in 2151 during the first exoplanetary mission to the system, it's a world covered in thick, dark brown clouds cooler than Venus. Liquid water exists on the surface in a highly pressurized state. So kind of like a mix of Venus and Earth combined. Let's give you something like this. Yeah, okay. Nice. I do like the colour theme on that. That's pretty cool. Alright, next up we got Ribed. That's over here. Where are we? Uh, there it is. Third largest gas giant. So this one's getting a, see the light, there's a tiny bit of light behind it. It's nice. I really like the colouring on this one. This is really cool. Third largest gas giant in the entire system. Bands of blue and pink swell in its atmosphere, given its signature coloration. It has protected Aster from multiple world killer asteroids in the past by capturing or breaking them apart like Shoemaker Levy 9. Nice. So it's also got a bunch of minor moons in here. Uh, slightly larger moon. Moon you're at Europa there. Look at that. So these guys have no description either, but there they are. So we've got the red moon. And we've got the orange year one down here. Nice. Cool. Okay, moving on. Iced mass over here. Um so this one first. So it's an ancient planet being captured by a rogue planet. It is older than even the Trappist One system. It was once home to life prior to ejection over 8 billion years ago. It was from the Andromeda Galaxy. My god, this guy has travelled a long way. So effectively, remember, this system is based in the Milky Way because we're a couple light years from the sun. So if this is from Andromeda, man, this thing has been uh, through a lot. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, is that would that even be possible in, in um, the present day? Would anything have even been able to travel that far from Andromeda to the Milky Way? I mean, it would have to be going ridiculously fast. To, to be able to do that. And we're talking multiple light speed across to get up between Milky Way and Andromeda. That's pretty crazy stuff. Okay, next up we've got uh, UI Unip. That's a nice colour as well. A large gas giant. Uh, it's the oldest gas giant found to date, warmer than all the planets found nearby. It's home to extreme forms of life adapted to living in the clouds of the planet. An unknown superorganism is hugging the core of the planet, helping to increase the rate of radioactive decay at the core of the planet, fast heating up and increasing the magnetic field. Nice. So the core on that guy must be pretty hot. So it's got a gas moon as well. Check that out. Then a big jump to the other one. There you go. Nice. That's all of those guys. Very cool. Okay, so now we're taking a jump out again. So now we're going to Callan. So this is the second star. So it's a K-type orange uh, dwarf star, smaller than the sun. It's uh, decently young compared to the rest of the objects. Very, very bright looking, though. 
So first up we got Chorus. Very close to it. Kind of reminds me of Korot 7B, you know? Oh yeah. Core of a former gas giant orbiting close to Kallen. It's tidally locked to the star. The gas has stripped away. Um, now orbits within the same plane as the planet, causing drag orbs to increase the or rate of orbital decay, leading to a fiery end to this scorched world. Yeah, that's not a good place to be. You can see all the material flying around it. All that material, look, all that gas. Next up, we've got Tizus. A world similar to Mercury, it has a major impact crater in the south of the planet formed when a Texas-sized asteroid smacked into it at high speed. I want to say it's going to be that one there. It's also a massive pocket of water we can't see. Alright, so moving on, I just had to sneeze a couple of times. <laughs> Not fun business, I have to say. So moving on, so we've got the next object here. Looking at pretty nice as well, Earth-like world, okay. So, Teyu. A world that was once like Mars, but has since been terraformed by humanity. Not much else to be said. So, it's looking very nice. You can see it's receiving light from the other star as well. So, obviously, the main star is more luminous. So it does reach over here. Nice sort of atmosphere shade there between the two days and nights. Or if you call it night, because effectively it's still just a very dim daytime. So, there it is there. Moon as well. So next up, we've got Tylo A and B. So that's around this Barry Center here. Oh, just flew straight through him. <laughs> Hello. Uh, where are you? Let me lock on. What's going on? Uh, hey. I'm stuck. Help. What the heck? Uh, let's try to locate him. So it's uh, T Y L. Oh, there you go. That's better. To A and B. Cool, they're very similar looking planets. A binary uh, ocean planets, tidally locked to each other. Both are similar mass and water concentration. Nice. And the barrier center in the middle, yep. Okay. They're literally almost identical looking as well, that's so cool. Alright, there you go. Right, so now moving on. So we got Light Beacon down here. A pulsar, the spinning corpse of an exploded star. It is one of the lowest po mass pulsars ever found. Okay. So obviously very small. Got the big pulsar beam as well. Very nice. And then Vulcan. So ruined, burnt up, scorched, radioactive, or you whatever you want to add to it. That's not looking too great. And as we can see here, there's no information on it. Error code, error entry not found, refresh it, <laughs> try again, corrupted, proceed. So then, loading. Vulcan is a planet orbiting light beam, home to numerous alien artifacts. Vulcan is off limits to personnel due to clearance for level, level 3, due to unknown... Pro... Pro... Oh, I, don't, I don't know what that means. Pro... Priorities? Of one. Oh, it's getting harder to read. Metric kill age. So basically, don't go there. That's what that means. Trouble. There's trouble there. <laughs> so, interesting. So, Vulcan, do not visit this world. It's got some sort of city lights, so there's someone there. Interesting. A ruined world for sure. There we go. But that wasn't the last object. That's the end of the description. But. What is this? It's the monolith. It's the monolith. The mysterious unknown. There it is. Oh yeah. Very cool. So that's chilling on the outskirts of the system. An unknown artifact object. Very spooky. But there it is. So that does it for this system. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this. I certainly did. Oh, how bright the stars are. He's turned up the brightness on these. They're so bright. Let's go all the way in. So there you go. It's a little better. So there's your line up. Really did like that colour gas giant there, that one. This ribbed one. That's really, really cool. But yeah, anyways, a massive thank you to the creator of this system, Rusty1890, for sending this system. It really enjoyed that. Good job to him. And yeah, that all said and done, guys. Make sure you have a great day. Stay safe up there. And also make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, help us on the journey to the next uh, subscriber milestone of 40k. Um, it's a long way off now, but we, we can uh, we can believe. <laughs> Got to set a goal somewhere, right? But yeah, anyway, so that will send down though, guys. Like I said, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.
goodbye.